The professional engineering license is one of the most important steps in an engineer's career. It allows the individual to legally practice engineering in their state. This credential can also help the engineer to obtain higher compensation and provide the first step in developing a credible reputation. But in order to obtain this license, the engineer must first meet the qualifications as required by the state of wanted licensure, including working a minimum amount of years under a registered professional engineer and obtaining a state-approved engineering degree. Check your state licensing board's website for the exact amount of years and education requirements. The engineer must also have passed the Fundamentals of Engineering exam, or the FE exam. Finally, the engineer must pass the Professional Engineering, or PE exam, in his or her license. Discipline. This video focuses on the mechanical PE exam and specifically the topic of HVAC and refrigeration. When studying for the PE exam, the most common question is, what should I study for the mechanical PE exam? This video highlights a unique studying method in determining the key concepts and skills necessary for the mechanical PE exam with a focus in the HVAC and refrigeration. First, some background information. The mechanical PE exam is offered in April and October and consists of an eight-hour exam separated into two four-hour sessions, a morning session and an afternoon session. The morning session consists of a breath session covering topics from the following three categories, thermal and fluids, mechanical systems and materials, and HVAC and refrigeration. The afternoon session consists of a depth session into one of the three categories. Again, this video focuses on the HVAC and refrigeration category. The first step in studying method is to choose your afternoon depth session. Then proceed to the NCES website at www.nces.org. NCES develops and administers the PE exam. They also provide an outline of the topics that are tested in mechanical PE exam. It is important to download and print out the outline because it will serve as a blueprint to direct your and focus your studying. This slide shows the first page of the NCES outline and it provides first provides general information on the PE exam and then proceeds to outline the various topics in the morning session. So topics include basic engineering practice, mechanical systems and materials, hydraulics and fluids, energy power systems, and finally HVAC and refrigeration. The third page of the outline covers the depth session this one shows the HVAC and refrigeration depth exam specifications. As you can see, it covers topics like thermodynamics, psychrometrics, heat transfer, fluids, mechanical equipment and components like cooling towers and fluid coolers, mechanical systems like air distribution and fluid distribution, and finally support knowledge like codes and standards. So once you have downloaded your NCES outline, the next step is to gather your references. For the HVAC and refrigeration topic, the following references are recommended. The Mechanical Engineering Reference Manual, the various ASHRAE handbooks like ASHRAE Fundamentals, ASHRAE Refrigeration, ASHRAE Systems and Equipment, and ASHRAE HVAC applications. For studying prior to the exam, it is also recommended to review your relevant ASHRAE codes and NFPA codes, in addition completing the NCES sample exam. Next step is to use your references and the NCES outline to determine what the key concepts and skills are for the mechanical PE exam. It is recommended to use the following criteria below to help you determine what is important and what isn't. First, the skill or content must be within an NCES exam topic, not outside the realm of the depth sessions. It must be testable within six minutes, not deeply involved. The exam consists of 80 problems and the time limit is 8 hours or 480 minutes which results in 6 minutes per problem. Thus the questions cannot be deeply involved or require difficult, time-consuming calculations. This is further enforced by the fact that only simple calculators are allowed in the exam. Thirdly, the skill or concept must be commonly used in the field of practice. It cannot be rarely encountered or obscured. Finally, the skill or concept must show the application of a theory and not the theory itself. This exam is used to determine whether or not an engineer can practice engineering. Thus, it tests your ability to practice in real life situations. And in this way, it is different from an engineering school type exam which tests theories and formulas. 
In order to reinforce the study method of determining the key concepts and skills, I will go over a few recommended skills for the mechanical PE exam with a focus on the HVAC and refrigeration. First, the thermodynamics and refrigeration topic. A skill that the professional engineer should have in this topic is the ability to navigate a refrigerant's pressure enthalpy diagram with the focus on plotting the vapor compression cycle and determining items like the COP, the net refrigeration effect, the net condenser effect, and the compressor work. Secondly, psychrometrics. A must-have skill is the ability to navigate a psychrometric chart. The professional engineer should be able to find the properties of air using the chart, calculate mixed conditions, determine dew point, show sensible and latent movements, and so on and so on. A psychrometric chart is very important for the practicing professional HVAC engineer. Third, the mechanical equipment and systems topic. The professional engineer should be very familiar with the various HVAC and refrigeration equipment and the application of such equipment. For example, the engineer should be familiar with the different types of cooling towers and should understand what situations are best for each type of cooling tower. The engineer should understand how the cooling tower fits into the overall HVAC system. Finally, the engineer should have the ability to size and characterize a cooling tower by determining the range, the approach, and the effectiveness of a cooling tower. Thank you for listening to my posts. I hope that you now have a better understanding of the mechanical PE exam and now know how to determine what you should study and what you shouldn't study. Thank you and good luck with your studying.